स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर इन टूडे लेक्चर विल डिस्कस द सोल्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आइटम्स क्वांटम मैकेनिकल प्रॉब्लम दैट वी डिराइव इन आवर लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स we have come to a place where we have discussed the schrodinger equation corresponding to hydrogen atom and we have also uh, obtained an analytical expression for the energy levels of hydrogen atom we'll continue our discussion uh, from there if you remember we obtained the expression for the energy level as en given by minus a square divided by 2 mu a square z square divided by n square where a is the constant give known as the bohr's radius whose value is 0.529 angstrom and h bar and mu are again constant for the system h bar is the universal constant and mu is the mass of electron or the reduced mass of the hydrogen atom so together this quantity is also a constant and its value is minus is value is 13.6 electron volt multiplied by we have z square by n square and this expression is now given in electron volt unit because we have used the values of this constant and converted this quantity into quantity to electron volt unit and this value is minus 13.6 where you see this uh, other term z square z is the nuclear charge of the system and n is the new quantum number whose value turned out to be 1 2 3 so on and so forth the lowest possible value was of n is 1 we discussed why n equal 0 is not allowed in your in our last lecture so suppose now i put n equals 1 before that let us say i am considering hydrogen atom so therefore z is equal to 1 and while i am considering hydrogen atom so therefore z is 1 when i put n equals 1 this energy level e1 would turn out to be simply minus 13.6 electron volt similarly if i use n equals 2 the second energy level i would get as minus 13.6 divided by 4 i'm getting 4 because n square n is 2 so n square is 4 and this would turn out to be something around 3.4 electron volt and similarly when you do n equals 3 you would see e3 would turn out to be about 1.51 electron volt please note that all these numbers are in, in negative because we have this uh, negative sign over here similarly you will you can continue with higher and higher values of n and you would see the energy if i have to plot this energy level so this is my energy axis so e1 turned out to be minus 13.6 electron volt e2 minus 3.4 electron volt e3 is minus 1.51 electron volt and if i continue to do this you would see that the next one will be something around minus 0.85 electron volt and so on and so forth one thing that you must uh, you must have realized now is that the energy spacing between two consecutive levels keep on decreasing as we go higher in energy so this is n is 1 2 n is 3 and so on so as we increase n of course the energy is is increasing but the spacing between two consecutive energy levels are decreasing now you imagine the case where n is very large or to the limit n goes to infinite when n goes to infinite then you see that we have this energy expression 1 over n square term so this quantity will become where n is very large quantity this quantity becomes this energy becomes a zero all other energy levels where n has any finite value you would see that the energy will be negative and when n goes to infinite this will become zero but as we see that when we go higher and higher in energy level the spacing between two consecutive energy level 
uh, would decrease. So, you can imagine at when I go to sufficiently large value of n, I would not see any discrete energy levels, but rather the spacing between them will be so less that it will be practically a continuum level of a, a continuum set of energy levels. So, this happens when n is very large. For smaller values of n, the energy levels are discrete or quantized. At higher values of n, the energy levels start appearing so close to each other that as if they form a, a near continuum. And this would term, terminate until even when n goes to very, very large value, this would terminate when energy is. So, if I continue this my energy axis, so this is my energy 0 axis. So, all these energy levels will terminate when energy is 0. That is because when n goes to infinite, the energy is, is 0. So, all the states of hydrogen atom have negative energy. The negative value of this energy is, is manifestation of the fact that there is an effective attraction between the electron and the nucleus. This attractive force contributes to the negative sign of the energy levels. But if you and all these energy levels are called the bound states. They are bound states in the sense that the electron is still quote and unquote bound to the nuclear environment or the to the nucleus. Electron still experiences the nuclear field that represents the bound state. When energy is positive that would re represent that the electron has left the nuclear environment and it is a free particle or it is unbound. If you remember in the course of our discussion for the energy levels, at one point we, de we decided to consider only the negative value of energy and we said that for positive values of energy, the state of the electron is unbound. That means, it is a free electron and it is no longer a hydrogen atom, rather it is it is it has come to a situation that the electron is completely free of the nucleus. So, we have a uh, plus nu uh, charge nucle nuclear charge with plus sign plus charge and a free electron. So, this system this hydrogen atom would said to have been completely ionized and then I am left with an electron and a proton. But we are in the quantum mechanical uh, analysis that we are carrying out, we are mostly concerned about the bound states of this hydrogen atom problem and we have seen this energy levels. All these things we discussed, the energy levels we wrote down were for z equals 1. Suppose we I consider z equal to, z equals 2 that means nuclear charge is 2, which system would have? We would have for example, the helium atom. So, if I consider helium atom, it would have z equals 2 the ch on the nuclear charge as plus 2 e, but helium atom would also have 2 electrons. The discussion that we had, the Hamiltonian that we wrote down for hydrogen atom, it had only 1 electron. So, the solution that we have obtained is applicable only for that system where there exists only 1 electron not more than one electron. Because when we have more than one electron, there exists a very important interaction that is electron electron repulsion, which unfortunately we have not considered in our problem yet. So, therefore, since we have not considered that electron electron repulsion term, we cannot extend this solution that we have obtained to any system which has got more than one electron. In other words, all the results that we are getting are applicable to a system where there exists one electron which is going around in the central field uh, of, of a nucleus of z charge. So, in this case if I have to use this or apply this uh, knowledge of hydrogen atom to some form of helium is that I have to consider a helium plus. When I have helium plus, I have removed one electron from helium. So, therefore, z is 2, but number of electron is 1. So, therefore, helium plus or in similar way lithium 2 plus and so on as long as I have a nuclear charge in the center and one electron and only one electron goes around the uh, nucleus, I can use this uh, 
uh, energy level expression that I have. So, for example, for helium plus I would simply use z as 2 and then the rest of the things would remain same. So, for helium atom the ground state energy will have minus 13.6 multiplied by z is 2. So, z is 4 divided by n equals 1. So, 4 times E 0 where E 0 is 13.6 electron volt. So, this is the ground state energy of helium atom and for the first excited state uh, or the next energy level of helium atom, I will put in place of n square as 1, I will use n square as 4. So, therefore, the second energy level of helium atom will simply become minus 13.6 electron volt. So, this way we can derive energy levels of hydrogen like. So, these are called hydrogen like systems. By that we mean that they have a nuclear charge of some value and one and only one electron is going around the uh, nucleus just like hydrogen atom. Now, since we have now an idea about the hydrogen atom energy levels, we will now go for the to discuss the hydrogen atoms emission spectrum. If you remember, uh, hydrogen atoms emission spectrum was one of those exp experiments that classical mechanics could not explain and Bohr with his Bohr's atomic model uh, where he uh, proposed that the electrons should go around fixed orbit and the angular momentum of the electron are quantized by these two approximation uh, by these two assumptions Bohr formulated his atomic model and using that atomic model he could explain the hydrogen atoms emission spectrum. But to remind you Bohr's atomic model could not explain the hydrogen atoms emission spectrum in the presence of external electric or magnetic field nor it could describe the emission spectrum of heavier atoms. So, they were two shortcomings of Bohr's atomic model, but now what we have done is that our energy levels that we have obtained are obtained from quantum mechanical arguments. So, therefore, they are going to we would show that the energy level expressions that we are getting will be also applicable to those systems where Bohr's atomic model failed. But before that we would look at whether our atomic uh, our uh, quantum mechanical solution that we obtain is able to express the uh, atom, uh, hydrogen atoms emission spectrum. To do that see we, we would start with this uh, energy level uh, energy expression that this is minus 13.6 electron volt z square divided by n square. This is written in e electron volt unit. Suppose I have I am talking about an emission spectrum from n 2 to n 1. So, therefore, I would write down as E n 2 minus E n 1 that energy difference. This would be simply minus 13.6 z square I am keeping z square, but I'll, if I am considering only hydrogen atom, so you know that this z will become 1. So, its effect will be nothing, but then to make the expression generic for all hydrogen like systems, I am retaining this z square. So, n 2 square. So, this is the energy of n 2 level and if I do this minus n 1 level, I simply have n 1 square. So, this is the energy difference between the two levels. When I am talking about the emission spectrum, instead of expressing this in, in, in electron volt unit, I would be interested in expressing it in terms of an, a wave number. So, in this case, I would simply divide this expression by h c, h as the Planck's constant c is the speed of light. And now, this is uh, expressed in centimeter inverse uh, unit, the unit of wave numbers. So, when you look at this quantity 13.6 electron volt divided by h c, uh, so this, this is in electron volt and h c. So, when you do an conversion of unit, you would see the value of this would simply be your Rydberg constant that you already are familiar with. So, if you remember 
using this Rydberg's constant, we could describe all the uh, different uh, regions of hydrogen atoms emission spectrum uh, by using n 1 as 1 and n 2 is anything greater than 1, we would get Lyman series, n 1 as 2 and n 2 is greater than one, uh, 2, we would get Balmer series and so on and so forth. So, all this all the series Lyman, Balmer, Pastian and so on could be described by, uh, by a single uh, relation uh, using this Rydberg's constant. And now, we see that we are reproducing this Rydberg's constant from the energy levels that we obtain from the quantum mechanical solution of hydrogen atom problem. Again to remind you, even Bohr's atomic model could also reproduce this. So, so far we have seen that the Bohr's atomic model and the quantum mechanical formulation of hydrogen atom are still uh, they, they agree to each other, but we would soon realize that how the qu exact quantum mechanical formulation of hydrogen atom problem is a step ahead of Bohr's atomic model. So, once we have different values of n 1, we can easily obtain nu bar and then we can reproduce the emission spectrum of hydrogen atom without any trouble. Now, since we have discussed the Eigen values of hydrogen atom problem, now we will discuss some little bit about the Eigen functions of hydrogen atom. If you remember the Eigen functions of hydrogen atom problem, we said that the let the Eigen function be psi which would depend on three spherical coordinates r, theta and phi and we did a variable separation and we said that let this total wave function be a product of a radial function r of r and an angular function y of theta phi. We had we started our discussion or we have carried out the solution of hydrogen atoms quantum mechanical uh, solution by taking this variable separation uh, strategy. So, here our total wave function is the product of a radial function and an angular function. To remind you this angular function turned out to be exactly the same Eigen function of L square and L z operator. So, this y functions were the spherical harmonics. where you if you remember th this spherical harmonics depend on two different indices L and M and L value can be either integer or half integer. However, since we are discussing uh, the problem of orbital angular moment of electron where the electron is orbiting around the nucleus, the only allowed values of angular momentum are integer, but not half integer. So, L is 0, 1, 2 and so on and so forth and if you remember for, for each value of L, I have 12 plus 1 number of m values where the m values go from minus L to plus L in the step of 1. So, minus L to plus L in the step of 1 would give me, so number of m values is 2L plus 1 for a given value of L. So, this we knew about the spherical harmonics. So, what we would do is that we would we would uh, give this in index L m to this uh, y function or the spherical harmonics. This we knew from angular momentum solution. So, therefore, we used it. Now, the radial part of the solution is something that we uh, derived for the first time in case of hydrogen atom problem. If you remember, uh, we defined our radial function r as a function of r as 1 over r into u of rho, where rho is was given by k r and from our previous discussion, we, dis we saw that k is z over a n. So, rho is z over a n by r and I have this function u which is defined as in rho. If you remember, we 
derived the form of u by looking at its asymptotic solution at low value of r at very high value of r and the main body of the problem. So, we had this 1 over r rho to the power l plus 1 this is one asymptotic solution e to the power minus rho this is the other asymptotic solution plus the main body of the problem which we call as v of rho where this v of rho we wrote down since we did not know what is the functional form of this we used a power series expansion for this v of rho where we defined v of rho be a sum of b j rho to the power j where go, j goes from z, 0 to some value of j max where we saw j max we discussed that this cannot be an infinite series that would violate that would make the wave function unacceptable. So, this series must truncate somewhere must terminate somewhere and that j max value turned out to be n minus l minus 1. So, now I can write, write the the j goes from 0 to n minus l minus 1 b j rho to the power j. So, this is the general form of the radial part of the solution. Now, let us look at what kind of indices does this function depend. Clearly, I see that it has an explicit dependence of rho to the power l plus 1. So, it depends on l. What else does it depend? When I look at this sum of this uh, summation series, I see that it also depends on n because it is not sufficient if I if I know only l value because I have my series will truncate at n minus l minus 1. So, therefore, n is also a quantity on which this function depends. So, the two indices on which the function depends the radial function depends are n and l. So, we give this index indices n l to this radial function. So, now we have two functions one radial function another angular function radial function depended on n and l the angular momentum functions depended on l and m. Now, both the functions have l in common. So, therefore, there exists a continuity between uh, the two. So, if you see for, for a given value of l I, I have 2 l plus 1 number of m values what are the values of how are n and l related? You see the j max the maximum value of j is given by n minus l minus 1. So, therefore, the maximum value of j the minimum value of j is 0 it goes from 0 to j max. So, therefore, the, uh, the lowest possible value of j max that we can have will be 0 and when I have this one as 0 then you would see that n is equal to l plus 1 this will be the uh, this should, this should be the maximum value of l uh, corresponding to a particular n value. So, in other words the l values can become 0 1 2 so on so forth until n minus 1. So, I see that there are for a given value of n I have n number of l values what are they they are 0 1 2 until n minus 1. So, for a given value of n I have got n number of l values and for a given value of l I have got 2 l plus 1 number of m levels. So, to find out overall total uh, degeneracy of the uh, system we would see that for a given value of l we have 2 l plus 1 number of m levels and how many such n levels are there uh, how many such uh, l levels are there there are n number of l levels. So, here l goes from 1 to n. So, if you see so for a for a given value of n I have n minus 1 number of l l values sorry uh, n n number of l values starting from 0 till n minus 1 
since there is a 0. So, therefore, the total number of uh, L values are n. So, therefore, I am my sum is now L goes from 1 to n and for each value of L I have 2 L plus 1 number of uh, m values. So, the total number of eigenfunctions for a given value of n can be obtained from this expression. If I do this, I have now two terms over here. The first term L equals 1 to n, n plus when I look at the second term, this is plus 1. How many times? It is n times plus 1. And when I do this sum, L goes from 1 to n, we know that this value is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 and plus. So, I get n square minus n plus n, this is n square. So, this tells me that for a given value of n, I have n square number of eigenfunctions. What about the energies? The energy on the other hand depended only on one label that is only on one index that is n for whereas, while energy E n depended only on n for, for a given value of n, I can now have n square number of eigenfunctions. So, therefore, the hydrogen atoms energy levels that we uh, drew in an earlier slide E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4 and so on the degeneracy, the level of degeneracy of this uh, energy levels are given by n square. So, for E 1 I have n square is 1. So, there is one function which has energy of E 1 which is minus 13.6 electron volt. Uh, I for E 2 I should have, I will have 4 different Eigen functions which will have the energy of minus 3.4 uh, electron volt and e equals 3 I should have 9 energy le levels equals 4, I should have 16 energy levels and so on and so forth. So, for a given value of n, I have one energy and corresponding to that energy, I have n square number of eigenfunctions for hydrogen atom. What are these eigenfunctions? What are their functional forms? That we still do not know and this is what we would discuss in our next class. In today's class, we would conclude here by discussing the hydrogen atoms energy levels, the hydrogen atoms emission spectrum and we will continue our discussion on the eigenfunctions of hydrogen atom in our next class. Thank you for your attention.